In the quiet night of the vast sea, two fishermen were fishing in the distance but pulled up a strange man who kept talking about something. The two immediately rode the carriage with the man to the castle and presented it to the king of Spain. He kept saying Juan Ponce de Leon, the clue to the fountain of youth. Having received the information, the king of Spain immediately ordered his subordinates to depart. At this time in London, England, Gibbs had to appear in court because he was mistaken for a goat bearded jack. Everyone present at the trial shouted for him to be hanged, but it was unexpected that the judge was Jack. He sentenced him to life in prison and immediately went inside to take off his makeup and return it to the real judge who was babbling, fuck your mother. Jack then took Gibbs out of prison and got into a carriage and drove away. Two friends having fun chatting with each other. Here Gibbs said that he had heard from the crew that Jack had appeared in London before. Jack looked suspicious, saying it wasn't him. At this moment, the carriage suddenly braked, what the fuck man is driving so carelessly? I'm sorry guys. Jack was dragged like a pig by his royal navy and chained to a chair. When the fat king of England came in, he wanted to find the goatee Jack but did not believe the person in front of him was Jack, because the guy had black hair, not blonde. Seeing Jack talking and waving his arms and legs too loudly, he ordered his subordinates to remove the chains. The fat king wanted Jack to find a fountain of youth for himself, but not because of immortality, but because he didn't want to lose to Spain. He wanted Jack to leave the British Navy, but he did not expect the head of the British Navy to be Hector. He miraculously changed his profession from pirate to navy, but now he lost a leg and the black pearl boat was sunk. Jack was angry that Hector could not protect his beloved ship, so he did not negotiate anymore and left here. After using all the techniques in the 36 ways, Run is the top. He escaped the pursuit of the soldiers and unexpectedly met his father again. Father Jack said that in order to use the Fountain of Youth, he had to find two silver cups on the boat on Ponce de Leon and perform a special ritual. Jack started looking for a new boat with the crew, unexpectedly at this bar he encountered the person who was impersonating him. So rushed fight to the death to unmask the fake guy. I tell you in this world there is only one legend of Bigotee Jack. The surprising thing is that the fake Jack has a champion and a fighting style that is no different from the real Jack. But fake is still fake. Jack defeated the opponent and then pushed the fake to kick tongue enthusiastically. It turned out to be Angelica, Jack's sex lover. Her aim is also to find the fountain of youth. At this time, the royal soldiers arrived, so the two jumped into the sea to escape. As soon as he got ashore Jack was drugged by Angelica's men. At the same time Gibbs was taken to the execution ground, Hector forced him to reveal Jack's location, but this time there is no GPS to know. Fortunately, Gibbs was one of the two who knew the way to the fountain, so Hector didn't dare kill him. The next morning Jack woke up and was taken to work as a cleaner on the black bearded captain's ship called Queen Anne's Revenge. The foremans looked like zombies and they were immortal. The mast was tied to a missionary who had just been captured but was fortunate to be spared because Angelica, the captain's daughter, asked for forgiveness. Jack went downstairs to flirt with his ex and was told by her, she pretended to be the daughter of Blackbeard, but the fool believed it to be real and he was looking for the fountain of youth. Because it was prophesied that he would be killed in two weeks by a footless man. Jack decided to trust her word for it because his middle leg still needed someone to take care of. After many days of working as a cleaner, Jack gathered a group of crew members who claimed to have never met a Blackbeard on the ship. Seeing this, Jack used his eloquent talent to say that this was not a Blackbeard's ship and incited the crew to rebel. The revolution to bring out the slaves soon after, the foremen who were overwhelmed in numbers were quickly tied up. Jack cheered, this ship is mine now. Whose is that, bro? Blackbeard opened the door coldly and approached from behind. He used his sword to control the ship that hung the rebels upside down, then dropped the guard on a small boat and blew the fire to roast him in the night. All felt fear before the Blackbeard's brutality, only he was still rejoicing with his punishment. Of course Jack couldn't get away with treason either. He was captured by the Blackbeard and created a puppet to curse Jack. If it hurts, he will take the same damage. Fortunately at this time Angelica stopped the Blackbeard because Jack could take them to the Fountain of Youth. The next day Jack tried to use his 21 centimeters sweet potato to ask her about the fountain. The water in the fountain has not been seen, but the water in her loose furnace has already overflowed. She said that the water in the fountain and the tears of the mermaid in two silver cups can take another person's life. When Jack heard it, the bird in his pants stopped singing. She led him to Sugar Daddy's secret cabinet. 
Here, ships that are defeated by Blackbeard will be stuffed into bottles by him, including Jack's black pearls. She sold this information to Jack, in exchange he had to take her to the fountain to take someone else's life for the Blackbeard, because she was really his biological daughter. Why is it that when she say this, when she say that, it's really can't believe a beautiful woman? Although Jack convinces her father is a bad guy, Angelica refuses to believe. At that time, the ship reached White Hat Bay, so the crew members took a small boat to the shore. Blackbeard lights the lighthouse and shines on a boat with several young men to lure the mermaids of the sea. After a while of waiting, the delicious mermaid from the meat, sweet from the bone also appeared. A brother saw this and asked, Why do you live underwater but your skin is so smooth? The mermaid didn't say anything, just saying to call her family and friends to come. The gentle mermaid suddenly transform into ferocious monsters that attack the crew members, dragging them into the water. At this time, other people appeared to drop boxes of emergency explosives. Blackbeard commanded his ship to spit fire, forcing the sea monsters closer to the shore, where the net was raised and waiting. But unexpectedly they had the ability to kick their tongues long range, the fishing team was quickly beaten to the point of not being able to lift their heads. Even Angelica was attacked and almost fell into the sea. Seeing that, Jack played the role of a hero to save a beauty, and quickly came to her rescue. Then he ran all the way up to the lighthouse, smashing the whale fat tank. The huge explosion destroyed the entire top of the tower. Seeing this, the mermaids spin their tails and fled. The missionary below woke up to find a trapped sea monster. He used his sword to restrain it, but it gave a pitiful face that made him draw his sword to let go. At this time, the crew of the Blackbeard cast a net to catch it. The next day Hector went to White Hat Bay, but there was nothing there. Knowing he was on the right track, he pulled out a pistol from his pants and threatened everyone to go deep inside even though the ship was being attacked by angry mermaids. Gibbs didn't want to, but because he was a supporting character, he couldn't be revived by the director if died, so he had to follow. On the other side of the island, Blackbeard's group had entered the forest. Jack asked her about the fountain ritual. She said that spring water and mermaid tears will be put into different silver goblets, the one who drinks the tears will absorb the life of the other. Jack heard a little shiver in his heart. In the time to rest, he approached the missionary to ask how to get to heaven. You should ask God about this. Seeing that the mermaid didn't look right, the missionary snatched the guard's sword and broke the lid of the box to save the mermaid from suffocation. We almost have a cheap seafood salad. They continued on the road but had to stop in the middle of ravine, but the Blackbeard asked Jack to jump down to find two glasses for him. Hey brother, why are you doing this to me? He didn't say much, pulled out a gun and forced Jack to jump down, but he would rather die with a gun quickly than jump down there dying for a while and then die. Knowing Jack loved his daughter, he turned to use her to threaten Jack. Have no other choice, he was forced to jump down, fortunately being carried by the director because he was the main character so it was okay. Above the group of Blackbeards continued to move to the fountain, at the same time Hector's group was traveling through the swamp. As he went, he collected poisonous toads to give as a gift to someone, and Jack made it through the forest and found the ship one Ponce de Leon. Blackbear discovered that the fishman's tail would turn into legs when he got ashore, the missionary immediately took off his shirt to cover the mermaid and then picked her up because her legs were still weak and could not move. Since then the missionary has met the eyes of the mermaid, she said that it was she who pulled his leg to save him in the recent tower explosion. Blackbeard ordered the mermaid to gag, causing the missionary angry to curse him, then he named her Serena. Back to Jack, although the ship Juan Ponce de Leon was climbing between the cliffs, he still found his way in, only to encounter his old friend Hector waiting for him. The two were about to exchange swordsmanship, but the ship wobbled so they had to choose a place for it to balance or it would fall, then the two went to sell salt. While testing the inclination of the ship, a box came through out from under the bed. Hector predicted that the box containing two silver goblets should he moved back to see it better. Jack despite running in the direction of the opponent, causing Hector to run in the opposite, after a while of arguing both decided to open the box hand in hand, but inside were two quite large stones. They realized that the Spaniards had been here before, thanks to the map in their hand the dried corpse of Juan Ponce de Leon they knew the location of the Spanish navy. They quickly went there to claim things for the deceased. At this time, the group of Blackbeards reached a land with deep lakes and fishman bones. He told Serena ghost stories to scare to her cry, but she broke her fear nerve, so her face remained blank. 
He pulled at the missionary to threaten, but Serena still didn't pry. Even when the poor guy was killed, she remained steadfast and indomitable without shedding a single tear. Enraged, the Blackbeard sent someone to carry Serena to dry the dew, and threw the missionary's body aside. Back with Jack and Hector, the two infiltrate the Spaniards' barracks and see two goblets. So they decided to crawl over there. Jack smelled a strange smell and asked Hector. He said that his sword was just poisoned from the toads in the swamp. The two defeated the commander who got the goblet and went out as proudly as if they were at home. When they were discovered, they immediately pulled out their swords to show off in a cool way. But in this room we play guns, not knives, friends. The missionary on the other side miraculously resurrected and came back to save Serena. This made her extremely happy to tears. Unexpectedly, the black beard came to take away that tear. Serena cast a disappointed look at him, but it wasn't his fault. Blackbeard continued to do drawing Serena and made the missionary go with him. At the same time, two legendary captains tied under a coconut tree were chatting with each other. Hector's goal is to kill the Blackbeard because he dared to rob the Black Pearl. And the poisoned sword was a gift he saved for the Blackbeard, and the one-legged one in the prophecy was probably Hector. Sitting still for too long, mosquito bites, Jack decided to climb a coconut tree to escape. He then distracts the guards so that the insider can rescue Hector. They were all happy again when Jack got back two silver goblets. The next morning he showed his dog face in front of Angelica. Behind them were Gibbs and a pig carrying two silver goblets. Noticing that there was a stranger, the black beard guessed that the legless man was nearby. Jack casually admitted. Oh that's right. Returning to the main issue, he took out the goblet to exchange with the black beard, the first not to harm Angelica, the second to return it to himself the old compass. He motioned to his daughter to return Jack the compass, and the final let Gibbs go. He didn't say much, agreed. Gibbs gave two silver goblets to Blackbeard, Jack gave Jibes the compass and told him to find his freedom. And he continued his journey to find the fountain with a black beard. Suddenly he discovered a strange thing, the drop of water ran back to the sky. If Newton knew about it that year, he would have torn the law of universal gravitation and we wouldn't have to learn it. Jack led everyone to explore a nearby cave, but after a while, he reached a dead end. Seeing that the group began to suspect him, he took two silver goblets and knocked them together. Surprisingly, nothing happened. An angry subordinate pulled out a gun and shot Jack in the face. Jack used the bulletproof goblet and thus discovered the inscription. He read aloud, natural mineral water is good for health. Immediately the water flowed to where they stood but gathered right above their heads. A bat jumped into a puddle and disappeared. He smiled slyly said. I already guessed it before. He then asked one of the Blackbeard's subordinates to take him up to the puddle and was sucked into another space. This is where the Fountain of Youth is located. The others who saw this also jumped in. Jack appeared wary as he slowly approached the fountain. Blackbeard saw this and forbade him to touch the fountain. Suddenly Angelica with a tense face called out to her father. He immediately sensed the legless man coming. And yes, Hector and the British Navy arrived. Because he is a man of the government, Hector accused the pirates of Blackbeard. So scared, so scared, who do you think you are, bitch? He drew his magic sword to show his majesty, but Hector knew full well that the sword was only effective on the Blackbeard's ship. Words helpless, violence reigns. The two sides then engaged in fierce fighting. The rescued missionary rushed forward with a sword. Unexpectedly, he was injured without doing anything and had to retreat back to Serena's place. After being released, she looked at him with loving eyes and then disappeared. Returning to the battlefield, Hector with the one leg was hard to defeat at the black beard, but he was unafraid, telling his opponent to turn around and see the surprise. As soon as he turned around, he saw the Spanish army appear in the mist. The Spanish admiral approached and took the silver goblet from Angelica's hand. Unexpectedly, they searched for the fountain because they thought that its power had infringed upon God and had to be removed. The two silver goblets were instantly distorted and thrown aside as an example. The admiral ordered the army to destroy the place. Meanwhile he mocked the Blackbeard for believing in the fountain instead of a god. Blackbeard took it as a challenge and was ready to go solo. Unexpectedly, Hector went to jungle to come out and bite, stabbing the poisoned sword into the Blackbearded. Angelica rushes to draw the sword from her father, but she injures and poisons herself. Seeing that, Jack went to look for two silver goblets. After completing the task, Hector conveniently took the Blackbeard's sword as a trophy and withdrew. 
Jack is still looking for the two goblets, whose fountain is now destroyed. Even when the Spaniards withdrew, he still could not find a goblet. Just when he thought it was over, two pomelos emerged. Ah wrong, Serena emerged and handed him two goblets. Jack quickly performed the necessary rituals and immediately ran to the Blackbeard and Angelica. He gave her the goblet containing the tears of the mermaid, and gave the Blackbeard the goblet that took his life. Unexpectedly, the Blackbeard used his daughter's goblet to drink. She suffered but loved her father, so she drank the water in the other goblet. But it was just a trick coming from Jack's position. I calculated everything, Blackbeard. Grass Paul lose all. Water began to swirl around him, and Angelica's wound healed. Blackbeard was sucked in by the ravaged water in his daughter's sorrowful eyes. On the other side, the dying missionary, Serena appeared, gave him a tongue kick and pulled him down. I don't know if he can survive, but I saw him down there and never came up. Back with the pirate couple, Angelica is still angry with Jack's trip to her father. So he dumped her on a deserted island with a gun and walked away to her surprise. Hector after getting the Queen Anne's revenge ship, returned to be a pirate, but the Black Pearl ship was imprisoned in a bottle that was taken back by Gibbs and returned to its previous owner. Jack looked at his beloved ship and decided to set out to rescue it. At the end of the film, Angelica is sitting to take the air when Jack's effigy drifts towards her. You're fucking dead, go tea Jack. The end of the movie, goodbye and see you all later.